And just because I have my belief that eating human flesh is tasty and good and I get my protein from it, doesn't make me a bad person, okay? You have your beliefs, I have mine. Do you see how like crazy that sounds when you put it in the context of people? everyone welcome to another video so if you hear some noise above me that's because it's raining here lo and behold coach Greg did respond to the video yesterday he responded in the comment thanks Greg for watching the video thanks Greg for your input um, I appreciate that didn't know whether he was going to respond but you know he took the time to watch it don't know if my points sank in enough though but uh, he definitely you know I appreciate the fact that He's commented here. What we're gonna do is go through Greg's comment, and I, look, this is good, Greg. We're opening up a bit of conversation. Look, we're gonna talk about this topic a little bit more. I honestly believe that Greg's just new to this topic, really. That, that's what it comes across as. He's new to this topic. He hasn't looked into it as far as maybe he could have. Shouldn't really address things unless you've looked into them and analyzed them logically, Greg. That's what I, like, I'm not gonna go, come and tell you how to do progressive overload on a weight set. Like, I don't really know much about that sort of stuff, so I'd probably come to your channel for that. And if you want to learn about animal rights, probably come to my channel or similar people's channel. So what we're gonna do, let's go through Greg's comment. It's quite a long comment, but bear with me here. Hopefully Greg watches. I don't know if he'll watch again. Maybe he will. Hope he does. So he says, uh, just because we don't have the same beliefs does not make me a bad person. I don't know if I think Greg is a bad guy. I was definitely questioning his character if he, like, this is what I do, like, if, if you know the consequences of your actions and you continue to do it and continue to promote, you know, products that harm animals, then yeah, I, I start to think, ooh, are they, they're leaning towards being not so good. When he says we don't have the same beliefs, uh, we actually do, Greg. <laughs> you believe animals feel pain and suffer. You care for animals. If I was to, to round up your dogs at home, your cats at home, do you have dogs? Dogs, cats, pigs and slit all their throats to fit my macros. You'd probably think I was a psychopath. You'd probably try to defend your animals. And uh, if you've seen me attacking an animal, you would probably defend that animal. You believe animal cruelty is wrong, just like I do. The only difference is that I apply that philosophy as consistently as practically possible in the civilization that we live in. So I did try filming this video before at the office, but there was rain pummeling down on the shed. I did sort of pose the question. Ah, oh, it's a bit loud, isn't it? Too loud, eh? Is there a thunderstorm happening right now? What the hell? I thought like the Lord Coach Greg was trying to curse the video. Is that Coach Greg? The God of Thunder? Creating a storm upon thee? We had to move to a quieter spot. I've got a bit of fruit here, you know, low calorie density, high water, high fiber fruit to give me some brain power because that was a bit of a, you know, already filmed half the video and I had to sort of cut it. Mm. Delicious and vegan. But let's get into this. So we're gonna go through that response, that comment response, but this time in a quieter area, so we get through it. So he says, uh, just because we don't have the same beliefs does not make me a bad person. So I've heard this before, like, you know, you have your beliefs, I have my beliefs, live and let live. You know, it doesn't make me a bad person to believe that animals should be executed and cut up into pieces so I can hit my macros when it's completely needless and we have alternatives. I'm gonna throw some analogies out there, Greg, to show how silly that comment actually is. Um, I get why you think that that's a, you know, a good response. You know, you might think, well, I have my beliefs, you have your beliefs, you know, you can't force your beliefs on people. But imagine if I were to th say that about different topics, which are, of course, different. I mean, I'm not saying these are the same as eating meat and dairy, which causes animal abuse and cruelty and yada yada. But does this phrase here sort of, can you apply it out to other scenarios? Let's just say uh, Jeffrey Dahmer, <laughs> who likes eating meat, he liked eating meat, but he liked eating the flesh of people. I mean, you're like, oh my God, this is outrageous. Here we go, stupid, extreme vegan with his dumb analogies. Just hear me out. What if Jeffrey Dahmer was like, look, I get it. You don't like to eat people, you know, 
I like to eat people. I kill them humanely. You know, you can't expect me to go vegan. You have your beliefs. And just because I have my belief that eating human flesh is tasty and good and I get my protein from it, doesn't make me a bad person, okay? You have your beliefs, I have mine. Do you see how, like, crazy that sounds when you put it in the context of people? Animals are like little non-human people, aren't they? Sentient with their own personalities. And you're justifying eating their body parts and products of their enslavement and torture by saying, just because we don't have the same beliefs does not make me a bad person. Now, Greg, do I think you're an evil person? No, I don't. Unfortunately, I just think that you are following traditions, habits, following status quo. You've been in the bodybuilding scene a long time, so it's always chicken for protein, chicken for protein. I get it. But there comes a time when you got to wake up and sort of analyze what you're doing and anyone can change, especially smart people like you, Coach Greg. Here's another sort of throwaway statement, sort of what I see with this next statement is he's just boom, 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 getting rid of more responsibility, personal accountability, just quickly wiping it off as he has done before. You're allowed to not eat meat and I'm allowed to eat meat, full stop. Wow. Does that address anything in my video? Like, you're, al you're allowed to not eat meat and I'm allowed to eat meat. Yeah, you do have the choice to eat meat. It's not illegal to eat meat. It's not illegal to eat the bodies of enslaved animals. It's actually completely legal. Uh, just because it's legal does not make it ethical, though, because you can just look back in history and find things that were legal, you know, slavery, and are uh, not moral. And we've moved on with the times and we've realized, hey, slavery is wrong. We're trying to analyze whether what is legal is what is moral. <laughs> and just because you're allowed to eat meat does not make it the moral thing to do. So yeah, I can't, look, Greg, I can't force you to do anything. You're gonna do what you're gonna do and I can call you out for it <laughs> because that's what I do. I, I am an animal rights activist. I speak on behalf of the animals. Just because you have the choice to do something, does that make it a moral choice? I say it again, does this statement you're allowed to not eat meat and I'm allowed to eat meat, even address the ethical implications of what you're doing? No. Just imagine a world where all we had was our conscience to guide us and not laws. Okay, now obviously the laws are catching up with morality now. They haven't always, but they are now. I mean, animals are really far behind. But let's just say there's a world where we just have to rely on our conscience. And Jeffrey Dahmer was like, you know, you're allowed to not eat humans but I'm allowed to eat humans because it's legal to eat humans in this hypothetical world. Would you think that that's a good enough uh, justification there, Coach Greg? You probably think, no, you're a psychopath for eating humans. <laughs> so yeah, the statement, you know, you can apply it to the animals. It doesn't justify it, does it, Coach Greg? It's just another throwaway statement, trying to diminish responsibility uh, for your actions, really. Now, now he goes on to appeal to nature kind of thing, in a way. My animals eat meat. So are my animals abusing animals? Now, Coach Greg, your companion animals are domesticated pets <laughs> that are in your moral control, aren't they? Like, your animals are like little children that you feed. <laughs> and your animals do not have that type of moral agency, the same type of moral agency you have. You know, your animals can't determine right from wrong in the same way that you can. Does that mean you can abuse animals because they can't act in the same moral way we can? No, that doesn't mean we can abuse them. <laughs> but does that mean that the animals that you feed meat to are abusing animals? Well, it's a bit different, isn't it, Coach Greg? It's a little bit different. Uh, they don't really have a choice. They eat what you feed them, okay? And they don't really understand the depths of the consequences of eating other animals, do they? <laughs> and uh, like, you know, if you threw, threw a dog out in a survival situation, they're gonna eat what they can, chase down rats and kill them. But you know, there, are, there is also like formulated, supplemented, plant-based uh, vegan pet food, which might seem a little bit extreme. Oh my God, there's, you can't veganize pets. Well, you know, we wouldn't start there, would we, Coach Greg? We would probably start with the thousands of animals that you're eating <laughs> over the course of your, you know, year or decades or life. We would start with you, wouldn't you? So why would you start throwing accountability onto your pets? Are my pets abusing animals? Well, no, they can't even conceptualize that. You're feeding them the meat. We would start with you and we would say, hey, Coach Greg, you can make moral decisions. You can choose what you eat. You're smart enough to analyze what you're eating and get the right nutrition. Um, why aren't you making changes? Obviously your cat, who is like a baby under your control, <laughs> does not have that type of responsibility, accountability, but you do. But let's just put it in the, the context of a lion in the savannah chasing down a zebra and slowly torturing them to death as they're killing them. Would I call that animal abuse? Yeah, I would. I'd say that that lion is murdering and torturing that zebra to death 
But the lion is in a survival situation. They don't have the same moral agency as human beings do. A completely different situation. I would not go, well, lions eat meat. I saw a crow eating the body of roadkill. Does that mean I can go and eat chicken from the store? Like, you just don't apply our morality to animals in nature or to, to like, a cat at home. But also, we've got the vegan pet food. So we'll just move on from that. Like, Greg, I think that that's just another throwaway statement to take accountability off of you, put it on your pets at home. Okay, now, this part here, Coach Greg's... I knew this would probably get to him, but it did get your attention, didn't, didn't it, Greg? It says, calling me a coward does not make you a better person. Now, I didn't call you a coward to make myself feel like a better person. I was trying to analyse why you don't have the courage to make this type of change, even if in your heart you're against animal cruelty and abuse. Like, some people... Now, this might not be you, Greg, and if this isn't you, then I'll be the first to put my hand up and apologise to you and take that back. But some people, especially when they develop a large following, are too afraid to come out and go against the status quo. It's not a very popular message, is it, Greg? It's not even popular with you. <laughs> and you're one of those people who are straight down the line and like speaking the truth. Unless that truth is a little bit uncomfortable for yourself, and you've got to change, eh? Like, it's a bit of a, you know... A bit different there, but Coach Greg, you show a lot of courage in almost all other areas. Like you call people out when you have to, you call the truth how you see it, you you speak from your heart a lot. So look, I'm not dissing you, Greg. I even think people should follow you, like, but just don't follow your guidance on abusing animals through diet and lifestyle and things like that. But you provide a lot of good things. Um, I don't think I'm a better person than you necessarily, but if you look through the animal's eyes, who would they think is a better person? The person who is continuously consuming and funding the industries that cut their heads off, leave them in horrible conditions in factory farms, exploit, treat them as slaves, treat them as nothing, and using their body parts to grow your body. And not only that, encourages their followers to do the same. Or me, who has boycotted the industries that do this to animals and spends his time educating others and encouraging his following to do the same. So that's what I'd leave up to you. But let's move along. Now, Coach Greg, um, this next part here, interesting. Um, I expected better from you, Coach Greg, but uh, we'll just read it anyway. It said, if a mosquito is bothering you, do you squat the mosquitoes or do you help the mosquitoes by letting them feed off you? Imagine this, Coach Greg. Imagine if I was like speaking up against a different topic that's about morality, but it's separate, but child abuse, okay? And I was like, you know, telling someone that buying products of child abuse is evil, you should stop supporting that industry. They come back to me and said, do you know, if a mosquito is biting you, do you shoo them away? Do you squat them? Or do you let them feed off you? Like, how the hell is a mosquito being swat? The same in the moral universe as what's happening in animal agriculture to billions of highly sentient beings every week or every day, if you include marine animals, which are animals as well. But I'm going to answer this for you because I actually respect you and I'm going to give you an answer. With me, I don't go, oh my God, there's a spider, I'm going to kill them. I don't actually do that. I don't intentionally go out to kill insects. There's insect deaths that are unavoidable. Now, am I telling you to, you know, kill yourself because you might step on an ant one day? Absolutely not. I'm trying to be reasonable here. Now, me, if a mosquito is attacking me, you have the right to defend yourself. Mosquitoes can carry disease. So if a mosquito, <laughs> 10 mosquitoes are eating your child, you know, biting them, and, you know, then yeah, protect your child. I would say use repellent first. If a spider bites me or if a mosquito bites me and I kill that mosquito, it's a little bit different, isn't it? It's different to like innocent beings being rounded up by the billion to cut their heads off because you want a needless bit of flesh in your macros when you can use plant proteins and you know you can. Let me put it in the context like this, uh, Coach Greg. Lions need to eat meat because they're in a survival situation. Now, would I let a lion eat me just to help them? Absolutely not. Would I let a lion eat my child? Just to help them? Absolutely not. I'd be shooting that lion if it come anywhere near my kid, okay? That's completely different. That is self-defense. Now, if mosquitoes attacking you, they get these crazy diseases. I don't know what they're called. Ross River virus, Gengi fever. I don't know what the mosquitoes have. Different, okay? To murdering defenseless, innocent beings for a sandwich. Let's continue. And then Coach Greg goes, uh, so there you have it. Coach Greg is a horrible animal abuser because he eats French toast. It's not the fact that you eat French toast. It's the ingredients in the French toast and the fact that you promote these ingredients that obviously, if you looked into it for five minutes, you would know cause animals harm, abuse, murder. Did I call you a horrible animal abuser? I just thought it was stupid that you would say that you don't support animal abuse. 
you know, when financially, if you buy a product, I saw a comment which was really good. If I donate to ISIS, that doesn't mean I support ISIS. Well, yes it does. <laughs> if you buy a chicken breast, you support the murder of a chicken. No matter how they were treated, no matter what the welfare of the ch chicken was, the chicken got their head cut off so you could eat their body. And you know what, Greg, I don't think you're a horrible person. I actually gave you many compliments throughout that video. I do like you, I do respect you, and I do think you provide a lot of value, and I keep saying that. I just think here, you need to apply your conscience and your kind-hearted nature consistently. Just do that, as consistently as you can in the way the world is, you know what I mean? You can choose plants over animals. It's simple, mate. And Greg, like, I don't want you to see this as an attack. Like, am I attacking you, Coach Greg? I was in exactly the same position as you seven or eight years ago, all right? It's just, I've been exposed to so much cruelty and violence now, I'm just trying to help other people along. And I've got a lot of hope for you, my friend. So all this video does is create a greater divide between people who eat meat and people who don't. Wow, Coach Greg, like, imagine if I said the exact same thing to you for the thousand critique videos that you've made when people have said something stupid. Hey, Coach Greg, all this does is create a bigger divide between you and the fitness industry. All this does is create a bigger divide between people who do keto or do, uh, you know, intermittent fasting and people like you who like to eat five meals throughout the day. No, you're just calling out nonsense, okay? I'm not trying to create a divide. I'm trying to reach you with the truth. Now, you have a saying and you say, I tell people what they need to hear, not what they want to hear. Telling you what you need to hear, not what you want to hear. That's all I'm doing, Coach Greg. I'm telling you what you need to hear. You and me aren't too, too much different, are we? If I was doing something wrong with my training or giving out bad advice, you would come and call me out and you'd say, hey, Joey, you know, like, you don't know what you're talking about when it comes to this. I've been doing this for over 20 years, okay? This is how you do it, which is what you do all the time, and I respect you for that, okay? If people want training advice, weight loss advice, they can go to you. If people want animal rights advice, they come to me, okay? So that's all it is. Not pushing anyone away. You commented, so I'm trying to create the conversation, get you analyzing these things. Now, now Coach Greg's like, why not make your, your next video about what should be done to me? Like, come on, mate. I just want you to hold yourself accountable and change a few things in your diet and lifestyle. You know, that's all. So that you stop promoting the exploitation and harm of innocent beings. That's all, like, I don't think you should be persecuted. I think that everyone can change. Anyone can change. Look at me, I come from really bad past, drugs and gangs and things like this, and uh, abusing animals through my lifestyle as well. When I changed, I'm just asking you to do the same. I'm not asking anything bad to happen to you, bro. <laughs> I like you. <laughs> what should be the fine and how many years in prison should be the penalty for eating fish versus meat versus egg whites versus cow's milk? I believe animals should have the right to live their life in freedom without you know, being enslaved and murdered, just like human beings have those type of rights. I mean, I don't think animals should have the right to drive a car and do all these things that they, they're not really capable of doing or don't need to do. I just think, you know, basic fundamental rights, okay? Um, and I think that it should be illegal to breach those rights, okay? Now, if you were to breach those rights, I think there should be penalties in place for people who breach animal rights, just like there's penalties in place for people who breach human rights. <laughs> for the same reasons, animals are self-aware. They desire freedom, so they shouldn't have their freedom robbed from, from them. They shouldn't be enslaved. Now, if someone were to go and buy meat off the black market when it was illegal, and then I think there should be penalties imposed. I don't know what these penalties should be. What are we eating that is the, mo the most versus least abusive? We're gonna sort of educate Coach Greg on animal welfare versus animal rights soon, but let's just analyze this part here. You realize people are not just gonna stop consuming anything animal related all at once. You know, I did that. I did that. I needed some help along with the journey. I made some mistakes, but I did do that. I'm, I'm involved with something called Challenge 22, which is like a 30 day vegan challenge where you try to go vegan for 30 days basically. So it's not as daunting. I understand for someone like Coach Greg might be daunting to change everything at once, but it's really not that hard. You could even do vegan meals. You could even do a vegan week. <laughs> you could even change a few recipes in your cookbook to vegan. I think you've already got vegan recipes in your cookbook, but you know. Um, you could do more of that. It's like going on a diet and never eating a single dessert ever. It's actually not like that, Greg. It's not like that at all. Think of it like this, my friend. You don't stop eating desserts when you're dieting. You just make amazing desserts that are low calorie, don't you? You don't stop eating wraps. You don't stop eating French toast. You just make them lower in calories, okay? So people can still have their French toast. They can still have their ice cream, but you call it anabolic ice cream. And it's higher in volume, lower in calories. So they don't have to go reach for that ice cream, do they? What I'm asking you to do, <laughs> is not to take away ice cream, take away wraps, take away your nice meaty proteins. I'm just asking you to veganize it. So you could do exactly what you do, like make the French toast vegan, use vegan egg, okay? 
which follow your heart vegan egg makes amazing French toast and it's got good macros in it. I've checked it out, but give it a try. Soya meat, vegan chicken, <laughs> you know? Or if you're making a dessert, use vegan protein. Soya milk, <laughs> that's all I'm asking people to do. They have to stop eating ice cream. It's nothing like, you know, dieting and never having a dessert because that's restricting yourself. There's no restriction when it comes to a vegan lifestyle. You can even eat Ben and Jerry's dairy free. You can eat ice cream all you want. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? And on the other end of your bad decision is horrific animal abuse and cruelty and violence, okay? Completely different to dieting. Dieting is more of a personal choice, okay? You're making a personal choice. And uh, when you eat the bodies of animals, that's not a personal choice. That's a choice that involves other beings, isn't it? Okay, so when people commit crimes, for example, with drugs, they have different classes, class one, two, three, four. Distributing crack versus marijuana is not the same penalty. So let's just see your video on the hierarchy of animal abuse based on what you're eating. And don't tell me it's all the same, as it's not the same, to eat an egg from your barn as it is to torture your dog at home. So let's hear that. Is it almost like he's looking for the least abusive animal food uh, to try to, so he's one that cuts out the most abusive animal foods, whatever they are, and like consume the least abusive, abusive? It's almost like he's asking me for advice on, you know, where he should go, where he should direct you know, himself, which I think shows an open mind. Greg does have an open mind, He's so I hope this is that. He's given me a bit of a job though. How do you analyze which animal food is most abusive? The meat industry, where you could look at pigs and chickens who are predominantly factory farmed, large amounts of cruelty there. Uh, you could look at grass grazing cattle, which you know, are abused less, but have the terror of a slaughterhouse to look forward to. You know, you could look at the egg and dairy industries, which have prolonged suffering. So 18 months laying egg after egg after egg after egg after egg. Uh, uh, the macerator for the males um, living in hell, uh, laying all these eggs, cannibalizing each other. Or you could look at the dairy industry having their calves taken away after being, you know, anally raped with a fist and you know, impregnated and, and bulls being anally raped uh, to get the semen from them. If you want to find out about that, watch my, my documentary on dairy. And then, so the dairy cows produce milk and milk, milk after four or five years, six years, seven years, getting their children taken away from them to keep the milk production flowing because cows have to have had a calf to produce milk. Uh, and then they get slaughtered. Uh, so I'd say, you know, milk and eggs, prolonged suffering. But when we talk about abuse, this is, can be interchanged with use. So to exploit someone is also considered abuse. Now, let me just help coach Greg understand animal rights versus animal welfare. Now, if you want to talk about welfare, you're talking about like their suffering, their pain, their treatment. When you talk about animal rights, you're talking about the fact that they're being exploited, used, treated as a product, commodified, okay? So veganism is more about animal rights. The welfare comes into it, of course, we talk about the welfare, but we're talking about animal rights. Now, you can rob someone of their rights, chop them up into pieces without causing them as much suffering. So if we were to take, put it in the human context, because it's easier to understand for people with this supremacist mindset, humans are, oh my God, the lords of the world. If you were to have two slaves, human slaves, and you were to torture one for their entire life really horrifically and then kill them, this would be, you know, on the lower welfare scale. You could have another slave, they could come inside the house, they weren't tortured, they weren't whipped, but at the end of the day, they have no liberty, they have no freedom, they belong to the slave master. Every move they make is dictated by the slave master, what they eat, they, they, they can't procreate or get married. And whenever the slave master wants, they can execute the slave and not be charged with murder because the slave does not have any rights protecting them. Which one would I choose there if there was only two choices? Well, of course, I'm gonna choose the, the, the form of slavery with less torture. So if there was only two animal products to choose, of course, I'm gonna choose the one with less suffering. But there's not those two options, is there, Coach Greg? There's another option. Now that other option is anti-slavery. It's slavery free. It's going vegan. It's helping others go vegan too. It's being an advocate and helping to liberate animals, okay? There's not just horrible welfare, much better welfare, and they're the only two options. Like you always choose the third option, which is to be vegan. Let's just quickly get into the barn laid egg thing. I know this video is gonna be long, but it has to be long. So don't tell me all abuse is the same, like to eat an egg from your barn as it is to torture your dog at home. Now, if you want a little bit of information on 
backyard eggs. There's a video right here. Uh, Earthling Ed did a great video on it. Is having a backyard egg the same as torturing a dog at home? Well, um, well, let's make both of these things equal. Let's say we force the dog at home through genetic manipulation and through their diet, feeding him higher protein, and they they've been genetically modified to produce more eggs. Let's just say this happened to that dog and they were producing football-sized eggs. So say the same size the egg is to the chicken comparatively to the dog, and they were forced to push those out of their cloaca, which is like a, an anus and all the other holes in one, which is what a chicken had, then forcing them to lay, you know, a, an egg a day. And this was putting an enormous strain on their body. This was causing them arthritis. We were eating the eggs ourselves. We weren't feeding the eggs back to the, the animals so that they can replace the calcium. Um, and then they get something which is like backed up eggs. I forget the name of it. The embryos of the eggs back up into their stomach and it's really horrible. They have to have operations to get them removed. So if the only reason you had this dog was to produce eggs for you, you can understand why this is an animal rights issue, isn't it? Because these chickens or this dog, they only exist to provide you with a product. So you've commodified these animals. This is why when we talk about like levels of suffering, levels of abuse, this is a welfare issue. But when you talk about veganism, you're talking about animal rights. You can breach the rights of chickens by having a bunch of them in your barn so you can take eggs from them and they are forced to produce more and more and more and you've commodified those chickens. And what ends up happening when these chickens become less productive, even in the backyard scenario, they go and get their head cut off. You know, very rarely do you see people just having their chickens in a sanctuary when they can't, you know, produce as many eggs for the owner. And backyard egg industry, it's a industry in and of itself. Most of these uh, hens are supplied from hatcheries who macerate the male chicks. You already know about that. I hope I've answered that for you, Greg. We're not going to go through every single animal product and analyze which one is more abusive. They're all horrible. High welfare does not mean that these beings have rights. They're all going to go to the slaughterhouse to be cut up into pieces. And that still wouldn't be justified, would it? So that was a long video. That was a long response video. Again, Coach Greg, if you wanted to, my friend, I'll reach out as an olive branch, a vegan olive branch to you, to come on my channel and discuss all these things. You can ask me questions, you know, in a cordial fashion, with respect. I know you're super busy, so you're probably just gonna say, nah, your channel's too small, I don't care about this vegan stuff, whatever. But I'd really like to just have an open conversation with you about this topic, you know, because I really do think you're a good guy. I do believe that. I hope that you make some changes. So, yeah, the offer's there, but anyways, Smash the like button down below and leave a comment if you would like to see me do a full day of eating Coach Greg style, but veganized. We'll try to recreate some of his favorites. I think we'll do it. Thanks for watching, super long video. Again, Greg, I'll tell you what you need to hear, not what you want to hear. Telling you what you need to hear, not what you want to hear. I hope you uh, incorporate more vegan foods into your diet, lifestyle if you need any help with that. Always here for advice, but you're smart enough to do it yourself, I know that. All right, guys, I'll see you in the next video. Maybe Coach Greg might leave another comment, but we'll have to wait and see. Okay, peace.